Assalamu alaikum folks, my name is Nazri Jameson and I'm going to be making barbecue today. I'm going to be doing barbecue briskets and you guys are going to join me because I want to show you how you can do this on a just bowl and lid charcoal grill. Make it easy for yourselves at home and enjoy barbecue at home as well. We've got something special with you today or with me today. I've got this that's coming up. The Beard Brothers Barbecue Secret Rub that I've been using for the past seven years since 2013 Beard Brothers Barbecue has been doing this and we've been using this rub only something that I've made out seven years ago we got a bowl and lid charcoal grill and we're going to be using charcoal we're going to be using wood chunks and I've got inside this place over here lava rocks that's just to help to maintain the temperature inside this charcoal grill over here it's going to be simple and it's going to take about eight hours to nine hours because we're going to do something that's going to take love and patience a lot of it barbecue takes up a lot of patience and if you don't have it you're not going to make good barbecue so got a lot of patience you got a lot of love you got a recipe for a successful night i'll see you guys in a short while let's go get the meat first and then we start off okay Hello, so over here I got myself an Angus Pure or an Angus Brisket. Now the reason why I chose Angus, I mean you can go grain fat, but this is an Angus grass fat. Now the difference between a grass fat and a grain fat is marbling and also fat texture. It's going to be different. You might want to read up on it a little bit. I love the grass fat and I try to do grass fat as much as possible. Grain fats are good. They're a little bit more fattier. The fattier it is, the better it is for long cooks. I got myself brisket over here that's probably about, I would say, maybe three, three kilos or so, 3.5. And I think that's all right. Let's start it off. We're going to open this brisket up first. Oh, I like to work this one hand as clean as you can and one hand handling the meat. Here I am. Let's open this up. Beautiful looking brisket over here. Now these packs usually come with a those black things that suck up moisture. And that's our brisket over there. Beautiful looking brisket. We're going to start to trim this brisket and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that before we start putting on our rubs. So we're going to trim a little bit of fat off over here. We're going to try and make everything as symmetrical as possible. Symmetrical would mean that I want to have not too many sides that are uneven. You want to make it as even as possible. So things like this, we're going to take it off. So let's begin with taking some of this fat cap off first. You can leave some of these behind. It's not that bad. All right. But here we go. Not too much. Okay, you don't want to cut into the meat. Fat is good. Fat is always good. Always good in my books. Now, this is a little bit thought out. You can do this when it's colder. And it's easier to cut too. So you really need a sharp knife if you're working on a fat cap at close to room temperature. All right, so like I said, not that much. We're good to go over here. So the fat over here, it's not that, the fat cap over here is not that bad. I want to keep that for flavor and for moisture. Maybe a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. There we go. Beautiful. We're going to trim that off because we want that rub to penetrate to the meat. So, a little bit of meat like this is okay to cut off. You can use this for sausages, which we do. We use it for our sausages. 
So you got this little area over here that's underneath. There's, there's a flap here. You want to take that down there. And you want to cut the fat that's inside there. Because that's just a little bit too much. You want to cut that off. You expose the beautiful meat that's inside over here. Take this a little bit off. So now that we're done with the top over here, we're gonna go back and we're gonna trim the back here. Now these is this is all lean meat. This is the lean meat part, and then up here you got your point. Your point is the fatty end. This over here, this is gonna be beautiful. All right. I'm going to turn that around and we're going to trim down here also so I don't want too much fat here see that's a lot of fat and as much as we can we're going to get rid of all this we're going to get rid of all of this stuff over here as much as we can every single bit of meat on this brisket. Respect the brisket. Now I got myself over here the Beard Brothers meat wrap. This is something that we've been using for about seven years since 2013 and I'm, I'm pretty proud of this because this is something that you know very painstakingly thought of so we're going to use this rub over here on our brisket and we're going to turn it on the flat side first and then we're going to do the top side okay the point end side now why we do that because i put it flat side down that's how i just do it some people would do it point side down not wrong you know and hey even how i trim the brisket it's all up to interpretation I love to trim it this way and I'm happy with the way I trimmed it over here. You might want to trim it differently because you might want some parts I don't want. But I'm just trying to put it asymmetrical that everything is on the equal side. Okay, let's put this on and then we're going to start off the fire after that. I'll open this up. Freshness sealed. Oh goodness, you can smell all that spices that I got inside over there. You can check that out. There's garlic. It's good salt. We use good salt. All right. No cheap salt for us. We use good salt in this. And we're going to start by applying these evenly on our brisket. Now, don't be shy with the rub. With brisket rubs, you never want to be shy. Well, just dab that in. You don't want to massage it in. I just dab it in. Once we're done with the flat side, I'm going to flip that. Now it goes to the point side. Again, don't skimp on your rub. Make sure you rub generously. You want all those flavors to penetrate your meat. And that's gonna be also the binding agent for the smoke. Your rub, like it or not, is going to be a determine. It's going to determine how much smoke that's going to bind onto your biscuit. Now I don't want to put too much rub underneath here. All right, not too much because that is not going to get too much smoke. Also, only towards the later part before we wrap up and that's it 
That's our rub. Inside this, this charcoal grill, I've got lava rocks on one side. This is the side that we're going to put the brisket inside. And then we have the charcoal, which I'm going to put on the other side. This only means that the brisket is not going to be hit by direct fire. The fire is going to be on one side. It's indirect. So it's going to work like a classical smoker, but not. Okay. And this is going to work. I'm going to show you how. First things first, we're going to light up the charcoal. And then once the charcoal is light up and it's nice and hot, you got embers, you're going to put it inside. Okay, so I got the coals nice and hot already. We got a good ember going on. What I'm going to do, like I said, inside this pit, there's going to be a half-half thing going on over here. Where the meat is going to be on the half side that is not with fire directly underneath. Let me show you how that works. Come on here. Here we got the charcoal all burning up. I'm going to open this up. Now that's going to last for a while. You do have to refill up the charcoal every once in a while. So you want to put the grill, the lid, in such a way where it's going to be that side where you can flip this open nicely to put the charcoal in. Okay? That's how we're going to do it. Make your work easy. We're going to close this up. And we're going to get the temperature over here see how it's rising up right now I'm gonna get it to about 225 degrees Fahrenheit 225 to 250 and that's where we want it around there so you want to set this at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit and once you get to that point you can close the holes control your fire using the holes you don't want the fire open up a little bit too big okay so you want to control that airflow which is down here and for this model over here it's also down here you can control the airflow from down here as well so i want it about half and we'll keep it there so i got a little bit of oil on kitchen towel over here which i'm gonna wipe down on our grill on the side which has no fire like i said i put inside lava rocks and the reason why i put lava rocks is that those lava rocks is going to keep and maintain the heat inside this thing here you need something to maintain the heat now with charcoal the heat is going to dissipate out really fast because of how this thing is built it's made of thin sheet of metal so it's not going to retain heat as much as we want to so we want as much heat staying inside and I figured out and worked out that lava rocks maintain that heat as much as I would like so I'm quite happy with that so we, you can use any rocks as long as it maintains the heat use rocks I'm using some lava rocks over here okay now when we put in that brisket it's gonna go on the side where the lava rocks are that brisket is going to face that fatty side which is this side here you don't want to go on the thin side, you want to go on the fatty side, which is this side towards the fire, as far away as possible as can be. So you see, nice sizzle over there, as far away from the fire as possible, okay? Now this brisket is going to shrink to about 40 to 50 percent. You're going to lose about 40 to 50 percent of brisket size, and that's just the reality of barbecue. Brisket is never going to maintain a full plum size you're gonna lose a lot of weight but the end product is gonna be beautiful and I promise you so like I said in the earlier part of the video we're gonna be using apple wood now you can use what I use in the shop which is rubber wood the only reason why I'm using this apple wood over here because it was cut into this size I was not gonna cut my wood into that size this apple wood chunks come in these sizes over here which is great and these are gonna burn well 
these are going to maintain heat well and these are going to give really good smoke over here what you can also do is you can also soak them in water so that they can give out a little bit more smoke sometimes i do that sometimes i don't today we're not going to do that so i'm going to put these wood chunks inside and then we're going to close up the barbecue lid and we're going to let it be for one hour before we have to spritz it with water check this out so I think two chunks of wood is just good enough perhaps a little bit more plenty but this is just good enough for what we need again the fire is away from the brisket you don't want to put it to with underneath the brisket directly gonna close that up control the airflow inside you don't want it to burn too fast and control the airflow on the side which is down here and that's it okie dokie we at the three and a half hour mark and I'm going to go probably about four hours on this one I think it looks good but we're gonna check it out together for one more spritz and then we're gonna wrap it up after that let's check it out together oh my goodness look at that and who said you can't smoke inside a normal bowl and lid charcoal grill you can you just gotta have the know-how keep it moist that bark is forming so good a little bit more just a little bit more trust me on this we're gonna go a little bit more make sure you spritz it good because after this, we're going to wrap it up. Make sure it's really spritzed up. Okay. Now, I want to add the last bit of wood chunks inside. Because after this, when we wrap it up, we're not going to put wood chunks. We're going to go on and carry on with charcoal. That's to allow the heat to cook through. The wood chunks are for your wood, your smoke flavors. So that's that's just what the wood chunks are going to be for all right i'm going to open this thing up let's see put it on careful there put a few wood chunks now realize that i keep this side of the grill clean so that when i open it up i don't have to worry about it going on the the brisket and spoiling my bark at the same time so i don't want that And you can see that it's raining right now where it wasn't just now. Not too much actually. I think this should be alright. Okay. This amount of wood chunks. It's just good enough. And we're going to let that smoke penetrate even more inside. Let it be for about half an hour. And we're going to wrap it up after this. Now don't worry if the fire comes up. Because when you close it always play with this hole with this airflow hole that you have right here on top and below you don't want a big smoldering fire you want a nice controlled fire for a good controlled temperature this is going good right now i would say yeah about half an hour more we're good to go we're good to go to wrap it up looks good say bye bye we're at the four hour mark and we're pretty excited because we're going to wrap this up right now there are a few ways to wrap a brisket you can use a few materials to do it some people don't wrap briskets at all I like to wrap it in an aluminum foil which they call it's famously called a Texas crutch and that's what we're gonna do today so we're gonna I, I'm so excited right now and uh, it's, it's four hours in it's going to, it takes a while to do brisket you know but it is four hours in let's go take a look beautiful so you realize that I actually put here a aluminum foil and this is so that I protect the bark on this side over here and that looks absolutely gorgeous I I am so happy with this <laughs> I'm so happy with this we're halfway there halfway successful but not fully successful yet so we're gonna wrap this up 
I use a towel, so get yourself a clean towel. I got a clean, good morning towel. This is brand new, this is clean. It's only gonna be used for food, not used for wiping the table and all that. Only to carry the brisket. Why? Don't use tongs and don't use spatulas and all that stuff. You don't wanna spoil your bark. So this will help you keep your bark. So I'm gonna take this, and carry that. See how that beautiful thing looks? The good bark underneath, this way. And that way I preserve the bark. Ooh, there we go. That's a little spoil over there, but don't worry. Not to worry. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna spritz it one last time. Close that up. We want a nice tight seal on this wrap. So I'm gonna wrap it up gently like a piece of candy. A big piece of candy. That's what it exactly is. It's exactly that. All right, all around. Make sure there's no holes that you're poking through. I mean, it is, it is a aluminum foil. You wanna be careful with it, okay? And there we go. There you have it. A wrapped up brisket. It's all you need. So you just gotta realize where the point end is and where the flat is. And I know from just the shape of this, the point end is over here and the flat is here. Again, you don't want to give the thin side too much towards the fire. We're gonna put it back inside over here. And I wanna control the fire a bit. Spits it a little bit. And close that. Now I still wanna maintain the temperature at 225 Fahrenheit. You don't want to go more than that. Being inside the aluminum foil or the Texas crutch, your brisket is going to cook faster. So you don't have to go that long. So I'd say from here onwards, we got another two hours to three hours more. It's not that long because we did cook a smaller brisket. What I cook inside my shop, that's, you know, double the size. So it takes longer. This over here, just for family use, you don't have to cook it for so long. Maybe six to eight hours is good enough for you. So I'm gonna check it at about two hours, and I usually check it with my fingers. You can also check it with a thermometer. I'll tell you that in a short while. But I'm not, you know, I'm not a tech guy, or I don't like to poke thermometers in. I just like to use my fingers. I, I like to use my fingers to just feel it. I like to use my hands and feel it out. Once I can feel it, I'm happy. That's something that I can explain to you in a short while, right? Take a look later. We have arrived at the end of it. Now we've been smoking for about seven hours. I didn't need to go for about for eight because, again, like I said, the brisket is small. I'm excited and I'm also nervous because <laughs> you're smoking now off a basic charcoal grill, bowl and lid. I got it the other way around. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's check it out. It smells good, it doesn't smell burnt. <laughs> I was afraid of that. And let's take this baby out. Let's take this bad boy out, okay? So we want to get it into temperature of about 195 degrees Fahrenheit. That 
is around 90 80 plus degrees Celsius now remember when you take it out from the grill and you put it down to rest it is still gonna go up that temperature is still gonna go up that's why we rest it because during that rest period there is still cooking going on and if you do an hour here if you if you are iffy iffy over here and you pull it out too late it's going to overcook here you got to pull it out early no bad thoughts no puns intended also all right so pulling it out early the most important part of a brisket of a smoked brisket is that you need to rest it for at least an hour for this size over here at least an hour the bigger the brisket the longer you got to rest it okay before you put it in don't put it inside a warmer a food warmer because when you put it inside a food warmer it's gonna continue cooking you're not resting it you have to rest it you don't want to continue cooking it so I got my brisket out I'm gonna let it cool for about one hour and when it's one hour we'll come back we'll check it out I hope it's cooked I hope it's well made I hope it's the brisket that I always serve in Beard Brothers barbecue Okie dokie, so it's been about an hour already that we've already let this rest. Now you can do anything in that hour. Go freshen up, chill out, you know, be with your friends. I'll be with friends, but there's nobody in the house right now. Um, except for the kids and the wife, of course. But right now, I'm pretty excited to see this thing over here. And um, you got to get ready yourself like a, an aluminum tray like this. Now, why do I get this ready over here? Because when I open this up, See, when you cook, there's different ways of cooking it. This is called a Texas crutch, like I said earlier on, which is using aluminum foil. And when you wrap it up, all that juice, all that steam is going to be inside it. And it, it, it does something to the bark. Of course, it does wash down the bark a little bit. So for a lot of the barbecue guys in Texas, I mean, I love to use it too. Butcher paper is nice to use, but it's not easy to get. So butcher paper is the best thing to get for your brisket if you have the means and if you have a way to get butcher paper and non-wax butcher paper because you want that butcher paper to breathe. Why they use butcher paper? Because it allows the moisture to wick. It goes out of the paper. But like I said, I'm using a Texas crush today so it's more like it's more like a slow roast inside there as well. So. I'm gonna put this inside this aluminum foil just to be safe we want to save that juice you can use that juice for anything you can use the juice for mix it with some tomato ketchup and some Worcestershire sauce and you got yourself a nice barbecue sauce over there put in a little bit of sugar put in a little bit of butter you got a nice barbecue sauce going on pretty nervous over here this is a nice Oh, it smells great. Oh, there we go. The bark is still on. That bark. See, like I said, the bark does wash down a bit because that moisture is not escaping anywhere. It's just staying inside over there. All right. I'm going to take this off. Now, you can already see how pliable that brisket is. Now realize when I do my work over here, I always do it with one hand. So you can see how pliable the brisket is. Let's cut into the brisket and let's cut in the flat end first. All right. So you, you do see some bits over here that are a little dry because I mean, you are cooking in a lid and bowl. You will have parts, not all of it. If you take care of it properly, you're not going to have all of it, but you will have parts that is not going to be all right so we got the band test which is basically that you have your flat side of the brisket bending like this and it's not breaking in its own weight this is about pencil thick so you're going to cut it pencil thick and to know whether your brisket is good or not uh, that's a nice smoke ring over there also all you have to do is just tug it a little bit and it breaks off with a little tug see that it's not it's not falling under its own weight but it's just breaking off with a little tug and that's what the brisket is supposed to be so you got yourself a nice a nice flat over here which is beautiful mm. good stuff and then mm, 
just hang on, just give it a moment. Mm. All right. Let's check out the point end. This is my favorite part. Now what you do is you cut into the middle of it. Mm -mm. Now you can see that nice fatty side, all that fat rendered. A good rendering of fat, you can see a little bit of fat behind there. We just left a little bit. Now I told you that with this size of brisket, you're gonna lose a lot. And we did lose a lot, that we did lose a lot of weight. But it's expected to lose a lot of weight with this kind of brisket. Look at that. That beauty over there. Yeah. And you can just, again, pull, slight tug, and it's off. Super moist, super juicy. It's still got everything in there. It's not dry. Beautiful. So you're gonna cut this across the grain when it comes to the point. So that's it. And that's all we're doing. Until the next time, you guys, please be safe when you barbecue. You gotta practice a lot. Practice safe. I'll see you guys on the next video. This wasn't easy to do, but eight hours. But hey, eight hours and just chilling out, I think barbecue would be good for you and the family. Until the next time, I'll see you at Beard Brothers Barbecue. Or until everything is safe out there with the pandemic going on. <laughs> Alright folks, love you folks.